All right, so the main uh, course of this video is going to be uh, changing the fuel filters on my uh, 685 here. Um, unlike the 986 that only had about 60 hours on them, I explained why I uh, was doing that in my uh, uh, IH uh, diesel fuel system video. Um, this ha these have like 160 hours on them uh, since, uh, that was just since last year, 150, 160 hours. Um, I do wanna change them just because again, I didn't own this tractor from new and it's a fairly uh, simple maintenance thing to do. So if you guys are following along, you knew that I got the wrong fuel filters for this tractor. They sent me the canister ones uh, with the glass bowl underneath for like your 74 series. Had to send them back, had to get the whole bill straightened out. Um, so, we're going to try again. Now, I have no idea if these are the right fuel filters um, for this tractor or not. The way I've been having luck with getting filters, uh, I, I'll put it this way. I should have just ordered them online because I knew which number I needed. Um, I have a couple online aftermarket parts company that I order filters and order parts from. But I like to spread the, <laughs> the places I get parts from, I like to spread it around. I don't like to just go to one per person. And uh, basically being that it was a local uh, mom and pop dealer, I like to support local dealers um, every once in a while, just because I, it, it's a good idea to spread it around a little bit. But um, like I said, I've had all those uh, online order fiascos this year and it happens even at your local mom and pop dealership too. So um, these are uh, Fleet Guard FF214s. They're the same. I have no idea when I saw them. I don't know if they're right because on here, these are two different sizes uh, of filters. So I don't know. Um, just looking at them, the diameter appears to be the same. So this could be another fiasco video. And if it is, I will finally get mad because this will be the third time that I have to try to get fuel filters. Um, so like I say, I try to every once in a while support the uh, mom and pop shops, uh, smaller dealerships. Um, <laughs> it, it, I don't know. <laughs> The way business is in the United States anymore, basically the big retail put out of business all the little mom and pop shops. It, it's the same with farming. You have these mega dealers that uh, move in and take over and uh, really can uh, sell things way lower than the local small uh, dealer can because uh, they do quantity. And anytime you order high quantity of things, they're cheaper and they can charge the customer a little bit less. So you have these mega dealers and then you have these little uh, mom and pop dealerships. Um, and what happened with uh, big retail is uh, online retailers. Now, the, <laughs> your your big retail put the mom and pops out of business or, or uh, uh, made th those type of places fewer and far between. And now big retail is going out of business left and right because of online uh, retailers and uh, sales, uh, sales stores online. So um, I, I don't know if it's... Uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out. It's uh, just the way it is, but uh, I don't know. I, I do still try to order some things from local small uh, dealers. So we'll give this a try. We'll see. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and we'll get into this video here. So I'm going to stop talking and start doing some work here anyway. All right. So your first step with changing these fuel filters, you're going to want to come around to the rear of your tractor. If I can squeeze through there, get down in a position here. <laughs> And on the bottom of your fuel tank, on the on mine, it's on the right side and the bottom. You have, this is your line that connects both of your tanks. There's a line that runs from one side of the tank to the other because there's two sides to these fuel tanks. In the front of that is a shutoff valve. So we're gonna turn that shut and hopefully it holds. It did hold on the 395 when I did it. Um, Excuse me, but I haven't done it on this tractor yet. So we're gonna find out one way or the other if this shutoff valve is gonna hold And if it doesn't hold it's not a big deal. Just make sure you're set up and ready to go with your filters uh, <laughs> It'll make it a little easier on you so we're just turning this around and We got it shut off, okay All right, so we should be good there. Uh, All right, so we got the fuel shut off. We'll get our handy uh, 
pliers here, like I said, that I like to use. And I don't want to crush these just in case these filters are wrong. I may have to put them back on, but hopefully not. Um, so we just get our pliers on the filter, squeeze them, and should be able to turn it off. It's good. Whoever put them on the last time oiled the uh, O-ring. So just loosen it up here and see if our shutoff is going to hold or not. So these are Wix filters. And we'll have a little fuel running out. We have our bucket ready. And there's going to be some run out of the line. And there the shutoff holds. That's good. Okay. All right. So what does it look like in there? Not too good. <laughs> so, all right. I'll let me get these uh, off and I'll come back with you. So this might cause some controversy, but I want to cover it anyway because a lot of people get confused. And... Uh, it's another one of the tips and tricks that I learned over the years, but I'm going to uh, still go into it anyway. Um, so when you put your filters on, you have bleeders that will fill the filter. And uh, a lot of guys will just uh, put oil on the O-ring, thread it on, and then bleed it um, with the bleeders. Uh, usually that works, but not always. Uh, sometimes you'll have to crack some injector lines uh, to make sure all the air is out of it. Um, another thing guys do is they will fill their filter full of fuel right to the top and then thread it on. And then, um, usually you'll just have to bleed it a little bit and, uh, you'll have all the air out of it. It'll start. So, um, now the argument against, uh, there's arguments both ways. Some guys will say putting them on empty and bleeding them that way. Um, and then having to go and crack injector lines, you're just putting more wear on your starter and you're cranking it over and cranking it over to try to push all the air out using the, uh, the engine to do the work. Um, and the other guys that, uh, fill it full of fuel before they put it on, uh, the arguments there are you can get dirt in your filter and uh, get dirt right in your injection pump. So I'll tell you the way I do it. And uh, just uh, for reference here, um, I fill them with fuel and then put them on and then use the bleeders and I haven't had a problem. So um, for the guys that say uh, that that's not the way to do it, um, I just want to make a note here. On the Fleet Guard filters themselves, you'll see step one. They're showing you filling the filter with fuel. Step two is oiling your O-ring. Step three is tightening it up and then till it's tight and then three-quarter turn. So this is what Fleet Guard is uh, saying to do. Um, now, for those of you guys that don't want to do it that way, that's fine too. But it all comes down to clean fuel. If you're buying clean fuel and you're putting clean fuel in here, you can see there's no dirt in the fuel. Um, you have filters on everything. Um, it's not going to be as much of an issue. Now, the fuel that I use to fill these is in a white five-gallon bucket. I can look in the five-gallon bucket and clearly see that there isn't any dirt in. Um, it's hit or miss. Like I say, some guys will do it one way. Some guys will do it another way. Um, the way I have always done it is this way, the way Fleet Guard is recommending. So, um, like I say, not to say any way is right. The other way is a good way to do it too. That ensures no dirt gets in for sure, 100%. But um, just a quick tip there, quick note as to how I go about uh, putting these on the tractors. All right, guys, so I have them both installed here. Uh, they're full of fuel. The O-rings have been oiled. They're tightened down at the right uh, torque pretty well. Uh, <laughs> don't want to get overly fussy here. You guys know how to change a filter. Anyway, um, I have them on whether they're right or not. We're going to try it. If they're going to leak, we'll have some fun here and uh, go into a couple things. But um, now that they're on, we want to open the fuel tank in the back. We want to get that valve open. And then the bleeders for these are actually going to be these two little screws on top that you open up and uh, the fuel from the tank is higher than your filters again. So it should push through the line and into your filters and push any air out. So even though I did fill these filters with fuel, they're not quite full. Um, this here has drained out from this line. It's sitting empty. So right now you're going to have air in this line. Um, so we're going to open the open the valve in the back of the tank and see. We're going to want to see if this is going to leak. If it's if it's not going to leak, I have no problem with letting them on because they will filter. Whether they're the right number or not, I have no idea. Um, so if, if they are wrong, I do want to call them and tell them, hey, this is the second time you got me the wrong filters. Uh, this is a simple, <laughs> simple task getting filters for a tractor. Um, 
So, all right, I'm gonna do that. Uh, one thing of, I wanna make note of, um, I'm looking at these old fuel filters. And one thing I did see, now you'll see how crusty that looks. This tractor only has 30, well, it's 3181 when these filters were changed. Um, like I said, I put about 150 hours on since I've owned it. I think this tractor has done a lot of sitting around because I do see a little bit of algae uh, when I poured the old. Uh, there's a little bit of algae sitting in the top of this. So I want to get some additive and put it in the tank so we don't have any problems with algae. Now, I've run pretty many tank full of fuel through this tractor. So I don't know. It's been sitting, I can tell, just by the way the filters are. So, all right, let me open that valve and see what we got. All right, the valve's open, so when bleeding these filters, get yourself a screwdriver or a little wrench, and you just want to open these. I already pre-loosened them. And I see it bubbling, so even though I did fill it full of fuel, there is still some air in these. So I'll just start with the front one here. This is the first filter from the tank and we will open it here. There's still a little air coming out. It takes a little while. Um, see what we got in the front one here. Yep, and there we got fuel coming on this one. And we got fuel coming on both of them. You see it running? So that should be bled now properly. We should have all the air out of this. So when we start it, it won't shut off and then we have to really go and <laughs> go through the whole system to try to get the air out. So we'll tighten these up and I'll just snug them a little bit with a wrench. Just be careful with these, these are very tiny. Even though the heads are bigger, the screw itself is a very small, fine, uh, screw so don't don't uh, bear down on them or you'll break them we I, we've done it <laughs> so let's see if we can, can't get this thing started and see if it leaks all right so we want to see if we're going to get this thing started again it's been sitting for a while i did run it that day for you guys on camera um but this has basically been sitting in the same spot since October, November. So it's never good to have equipment sitting around. But um, if you guys are subscribed to the Soybean Farmers channel, you'll see the video he did about the uh, battery uh, knife switch, the quick disconnect and the issues he was having. Um, I figured I'd show you guys the system I have on my tractors. You'll take notice it's one of these systems here that just basically threads on you stick it on and you thread it right on and you're good to go um i do believe in these things just because of old tractors old wiring and it's a little bit extra insurance to not let your batteries hooked up uh when nobody's home or uh, nobody's here um it's just for safety's sake and if you do have to disconnect it quick you don't need a wrench you just uh, undo it so i've had luck with these these were from all states ag parts um Pretty good. The only thing I don't like is you can't get the, I couldn't find the ones you crimp on. These are the bolt on style. So it is what it is. Let's see if we can't get this thing started. been sitting a while it actually sounds like it has a mist <laughs> these are smoky engines until they warm up they're probably gonna smoke constantly I don't see anything leaking yet so I'll do a summary here once I see how this works out all right guys, so in summary here, we got it running. It's uh, cleared up a little bit and sitting a while. It's just a little bit needs to be run. Um, I don't see any fuel leaking. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna stick a piece of cardboard under and make sure maybe these are the right filters. Maybe I'm just a little bit uh, getting all wound up over nothing. Maybe the old Wix filters aren't right and these are the right ones. I don't know, um, but we aren't leaking any fuel here. So I might just uh, be getting too excited here. They are Fleet Guard FF214s, and there's two of them. So we have it running here. Um, I guess that'll be it for today's project. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, hope you enjoyed it.